Bridges to Progress is a poverty reduction initiative that has a number of focuses here in our community. I got to find out what started this program and learn about some important task force ideas that are in the works. Check it out. We are here talking about Bridges to Progress. And can you tell me what Bridges to Progress is and how it all began? Well, back in December of 2013, there were a lot of people in our community who worked at agencies and uh, throughout who were interested in getting more information about how to bring people out of poverty. And so they brought in someone from the uh, Bridges Out of Poverty group to speak to people in the community and a thousand people showed up. And so there was great interest in people learning more about poverty and beginning to try to empathize with what it, it felt like to to live in poverty. And I'm hearing that you are a part of one of the committees here. You talk about the, the committees that make up the Bridges to Progress. In 2017, um, Bridges Out of Poverty merged with uh, the Poverty to Progress Committee, uh, which was started. And um, so when they did that, you had a new steering committee that is made up of different uh, topics from all of the previous committees, things like housing, food, education, faith, legal, and I am one of the leaders of the faith committee. Can you tell me about the expungement clinic? So this was born out of an idea that uh, you find in other places of the country, including Philadelphia, Colorado, some other locations. And the expungement clinic is an idea where you take a local facility, like a neighborhood center, or a church, or a community center, and you bring all the resources there, DMV, legal, uh, SNAP benefits, to a locality as opposed to taking a lot of time to go out to the other services. It takes time, it takes bus fare, it takes transportation, and we have transportation issues too. So by bringing all those resources to one location, we can really help more people. The idea would be to have a, a clinic on a Saturday, nine to two or something like that, where you bring all those resources together, including legal. The term expungement means get rid of uh, items on your legal record so that you can vote again, so that you can get a driver's license again. So when you're coming out of incarceration, this really gives you a leg up to uh, get a job, get a house, that sort of thing. And would you happen to know if there's anything coming up soon with expungement or are you, is it just the planning that's happening right now? So we have talked about this idea with corporate sponsors who would be uh, uh, interested in funding a, a uh, clinic like this, and also the people that would come together and provide the ex expungement services or other legal services. Um, there's a group called the Expungement Council. They're in Charlottesville, so we're in some discussions with them to see how they uh, would proceed through uh, these type of efforts. There are other councils in the state of Virginia that we could also work with to figure out how are you doing this? What's the best way to uh, make this happen for Lynchburg? Lynchburg is unique though. We have, our, we have our hills, we have our transportation issues, food issues, and so we have to create a, uh, uh, a solution that is right for Lynchburg. And I know that there is a focus that you guys have right now, the Universal Pre-K Initiative. Can you tell me about that? One of the focus points of the group is the Universal Pre-K Initiative, and that is to allow pre-K, make it available to all children, regardless of income level. We would like to use the collective impact model and the five steps to get that model in place. Um, so that would be our group having common goals, setting a common uh, metric, creating a plan of action. So even if there are separate um, programs that they're, you know, operate on their own, there's an agreement to support other programs, not just a one size fits all approach. Um, also including creating a consortium with leaders, partnering with backbone organizations that, you know, gather data and to coordinate the activities. So based on some pre-K survey results, looking at those numbers, there's about 35% of the population under the age of five that can be served by public and private licensed daycares. That leaves out 65% of that population, and that's a huge need for the city. If you would like more information on Bridges to Progress and other task forces that are in this initiative, give them a call at 434-455-6906 or head to the website lynchburgva.gov forward slash bridges dash progress.